Have you heard about the song of Moses? In this lesson, we will learn that singing sometimes makes a message more memorable. Happy Sunday. Are you missing your Sunday school? Would you like to be a part of our Sunday school? Then like, subscribe, comment, ring the bell, and you'll be notified every time I post a new video on our Sunday school lesson. Giveaway is going great. We are, you are not late. You're not too late. Uh, just start and watch these two lessons or these two lessons and look for the keyword and comment under the lessons, the keyword and what it means to you. Those are the only rules to this giveaway. And you can also look below if you want to read the giveaway rules. But it will start on the day you watch your lessons and it will go until Christmas Day lesson. Hi, I'm Regina Reed, and I teach Sunday school at Antioch Missionary Baptist Church in Maven, Mississippi. Now, let's get into this lesson. Today's lesson is the Song of Moses. The most reading is Exodus, the 14th chapter, verses 21 through 31. Our background scripture is Deuteronomy, the 31st chapter, verse 30, through the 32nd chapter verse 47 and our key verse is Deuteronomy the 32nd chapter verse 46. Our lesson aims is recall ways that the Lord have blessed his people. Number two, determine the identity of they in Deuteronomy 32 and 5 and three, compose a personal song of thankfulness to the Lord. Let's start with a prayer. God, you are the rock in whom we can find provision and protection. Lead us in your way so that we will not turn away from you. In Jesus' name, amen. In our introduction, we're going to, I'm going to show you all the, I will be looking at this a while because this is how you can tell how the uh, different people are born and where they came from. So this is Jacob. This is Esau's brother, Jacob, still. This is from Leah, the first wife that he had. And this is from the son, Levi. And this is where Moses is born into. Moses is born into this family. So these are the names of the sons of Israel, which is also known as Jacob. So I won't read the, all of the names again this Sunday, but this is the same family tree we looked at last week. But Levi, this Levi is Moses' father. And that's who we're talking about, Moses. Uh, the same Moses we're talking about last week. We're still talking about him this week. So Moses was not only a great prophet, but also a great song leader. After three sermons, he changed the form of his message into singing. Sometimes reciting something in a different form makes it easier to remember. This song gives a brief history of Israel. It reminds the people of their mistakes, warns them to avoid repetition of those mistakes, and offers the hope that comes. Only in trusting God. The Israelites had no excuse for abandoning God. He had shielded them like a kindly shepherd. He had guarded them like a person protects the pupil of his eye. He had been the encircling protector, like a mother eagle who protects her young. The Lord alone had led them, and he also leads us. Let us remember to trust him. Our lesson scripture today is Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter, verses three through six, and then it skips to verses 10 through 14, and then it picks up verse 18, verse three. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. When God's name is proclaimed, it means that people are telling others about how great he is. This can be done by singing songs about him, telling stories about his goodness, or even just saying kind words about him to others. When we celebrate God's greatness, it shows that we are thankful for all the good things he has done for us and that we want to praise him for who he is. Verse four, he is the rock. His work is perfect for all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. God is the anchor for his people because he is the one and only rock. He is the savior and ruler because he is great. 
God is like a rock that we can cling to when we are in rough waters. He is like a bright light that guides us safely, just as we need an anchor and a light to help us during a storm. We need God to help us through life's challenges. Even when we question God's acts of judgment are just right. Just like a parent knows what is best for their child, even when the child doesn't understand, God knows what is best for us. His judgments may not make sense to us in the moment, but they are always fair and right. God is true and faithful. He's all, he always does what is right and good. He never does anything bad. He's holy, which means he's perfect and good all the time. This song is about how great and perfect God is. He is so holy and good that we should worship him. We should praise him for his goodness and love. Verse five, they have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are perverse and crooked generation. In order to make a sacrifice to God, the Israelites were required to use livestock. They did not have any spots. This is because the animal needed to be pure and perfect in order to be seen as an acceptable offering. For example, if someone was going to sacrifice a cow, it could not have any blemishes or imperfections. It had to be perfectly healthy animal. The people of God became corrupted by sinful influences and took on the spots of corruption. For example, they may have started worshiping false gods or engaging in immoral activities. This made them unclean and unworthy to be in God's presence. Verse six, do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not thy father that hath brought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Is this the way you repay the Lord, you foolish and senseless people? Isn't he your father who created you? Has he not made you and established you? The people of Israel had a relationship with God, but they betrayed it by worshiping other gods. It's like you have a best friend. Then you go and hang out with someone else instead. You're still friends with your best friend, but you're not being a very good friend by hanging out with someone else instead. God chose the person of Israel to be his special people. He gave them rules to follow and promised to bless them if they obeyed. But even though God was so good to them, the Israelites would often disobey him and go their own way. This made God unhappy with his people. Verse 10, he found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. He found them in a desert land, in an empty howling wasteland. He surrounded them and watched over them. He guarded them as he would guard his own eyes. The Israelites were slaves in Egypt for many years. And during that time, they were not free to do what they wanted or go where they wanted. They had to work hard every day and were not treated well. This time was like a desert for them because it was very difficult and there was no hope for a better future. God is very protective of his people. He is like a father who protects his children from harm. He wants to keep them safe from all the bad things in the world. Just like a father would do everything to keep his child from being hurt. God will do everything to protect his people. Verse number 11. An eagle stirreth her nest, floweth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, and taketh them, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. The second metaphor relates God's care for his people to an eagle caring for its young. Like an eagle that roused her chicks and hovers over her young, so he spreads his wings to take them up and carry them safely on his pinions. The mother eagle is very protective of her chicks and will do whatever she can to make sure they are safe. She will fly high above them to make sure they are not in danger and will even attack other animals if she thinks they are a threat. The following is an example of a parent caring for their child. 
The eagle is the parent and the chicks are the children. The eagle is trying to help the chicks learn to fly by spreading its wings. This is similar to a parent teaching their child how to do something new. Verse 12. So the Lord alone did lead him and there was no strange God with them. The Lord alone guided them. They followed no other foreign gods. As a part of this unique identity, Israel was not to follow any strange, that is, foreign gods. The people who followed the one true God were free. They could do what they wanted and they weren't controlled by anyone. However, if they didn't follow the one true God, they would be controlled by sin and wouldn't be free. Verse 13. He made him ride on the high places of the earth that he might eat the increase of the field and he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. He led them over the highlands and feasted on the crops of the field. He nourished them with honey from the rock and olive oil from the stony ground. Now, the song is talking about how Israel's hope for a better future. They hope for many blessings like peace and happiness. If the people followed God, they would experience safety from destructive forces. This is because God is all powerful and can protect us from anything that might hurt us. For example, the high places would be safe from an enemy invasion because the enemy would not be able to reach them. An analogy would be if you were on top of a mountain and someone was trying to attack you, but they couldn't because they couldn't climb the mountain. To increase the amount of crops they grew, there would be more food for everyone. This means the people would never go hungry or experience famine. The phrase oil and honey flowed out of rock implies that there is always enough food and resources, even in difficult times. This is because just like oil and honey can, can, cannot, cannot flow out of a rock, there is always hidden abundance of resources that we can find if we look hard enough. Verse 13, butter of kine and milk of sheep and fat of lamb and rams of the breed of Basham and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat. And thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. He fed them yogurt from the herd of milk from the flock together with the fat lamb. He gave them choice rams from Basham and goats together with the choice, choicest, choicest wheat. You drank the finest wine made from the juice of grapes. The land provides good food for the people and their animals. The animals provide food and the other resources for the people. Together, they can help each other survive and thrive. Rams from the Basham region were highly prized because they were considered to be very high quality. The Basham region was known for its high quality breeding stock and the rams from this region were some of the best in the world. The song is about how the land provides us with food. The land is fertile and full of life and it makes it a great place to grow crops. The song celebrates the agricultural bounty of the land and how it benefits us all. The best quality of wheat is indicated by the item the fat of kidneys of wheat. This means that the wheat is very plump and full and has a lot of nutrients. The wheat is also very soft and easy to eat. Verse 18. Of the rock that beget thee, thou art unmindful and hath forgotten God that formed thee. You neglected the rock who had fathered you. You forgot the God who had given you birth. The children of Israel were comfortable and happy. They ignored God and didn't thank him for their blessings. He was the source of their comfort and happiness, but they didn't realize it. Eventually, their ignorance caught up with them, and they started to worship false gods instead of the one true God. The song refers again to two previously used metaphors. A metaphor is a figure of speech that uses one thing to represent another. For example, she's a tiger is a metaphor for she's fierce. 
or he's a beast is a metaphor for he's strong. God as a rock, Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter in the fourth verse, and God as a parent who beget children. This is also uh, in Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter, verses 5 and 11. This verse is a mixed metaphor. Rocks don't have children. But the resulting point of the scope of God's relationship with Israel, he was their source of life and their sustainer, their rock, our rock. Conclusion. Throughout church history, believers have expressed their joys, doubts, fears, and hopes in song. These songs of worship have shaped believers into spiritually mature disciples of Jesus. Singing should not be boring. Instead, our singing should include repentance with praise and self-examination with satisfaction. Only in that way can singing shape us as people of God. On the surface, the nature of the song in today's text is rather unbelieving. It highlights the failure of the people of Israel. Yet the song leads to an announcement of hope. God's salvation will transform and sustain if only people remember his steadfast commitment to them. As a result, God's people can sing of his mighty deeds, all while confessing our their own failure to appreciate him. That same sort of forgetfulness can play Christians today when we forget that our salvation is a gift from God as he draws us into his kingdom. We do not earn that citizenship. It was given to us freely. God sustains us when we recite the story of his faith and live it in our lives. Thought to remember, God's people sing of his provision and protection. If you have enjoyed this lesson, share it, love each other, stay six feet apart, get your shots, and I will see you all next week.